Let's go back to Hawaii about 30 million years ago. In the middle of the Pacific Ocean, 2,500 miles from the nearest continent, there was nothing there, but underneath, the Earth was changing. Hot spots created by explosions deep in the center of the Earth caused the tectonic plates to move, and lava from the upper mantle, just below the Earth's crust, escaped. Mountains of volcanic rock rose from the bottom of the ocean and became so tall they broke the surface. The Mokupuni o Hawaii, the Hawaiian Islands, were born. The 129 Leeward Islands came first, about 30 million years ago. Then about 6 million years ago, the eight main islands started to form. Ni'ihau and Kauai emerged first. The other islands rose up one by one over the next 5 million years. Oahu, Maui Nui, which included Molokai, Maui, Lanai, and Kolabe and Big Island about a million years ago. The Hawaiian island chain is a big underwater mountain range. The peaks above the water form the islands. On a clear day, you can see the underwater slopes of the mountains descending deep into the ocean. Big Island is a big island. It took one or two million years to form each of the islands, and Big Island isn't finished yet. Two volcanoes, Kilauea and Mauna Loa, the largest active volcano in the world, continue to erupt, spreading lava and adding to the volcanic rock that makes up the island. The two types of lava flows are Pahoehoe and A'a. Pahoehoe is very hot and takes more time to cool. It's really smooth like cake batter and sometimes looks like twisted rope. A'a isn't as hot and forms into jagged chunks as it is flowing. If you haven't guessed it yet, all the Hawaiian islands are made of pahoehoe and a'a. Isn't that crazy? Volcanologists. Scientists that study volcanoes. Use these two words from the Hawaiian language to describe volcano flows all over the world. At the Lava Tree State Monument, a Pahoehoe flow in 1790 covered a forested area, creating these ghostly molds of trees that died long ago. In 1955, a Kilauea eruption in Lower Puna on the Big Island destroyed sugarcane, papaya groves, houses, and entire forests. Eruptions like this continue on Big Island to this day, making the future for its residents uncertain. Ancient Hawaiians believed it was Pele, the goddess of volcanoes, that controlled the lava flow. Picture Kauai freshly emerged from the ocean, just a big rocky mound sticking out of the water. What happens next? Plants. Plants came by air, by water, and by bird. The first plant to arrive in Hawaii was probably algae. It was already in the ocean, and all it had to do was land on the new Hawaiian shores. Sunlight took care of the rest. The fresh volcanic rock in the middle of the island made a great place for lichen spores to colonize, and they quickly spread as well. Once the algae and lichens took hold, the fern spores had a place to land and start to grow. Botanists, plant scientists, spend lots of time studying plants that grow in lava flows on Big Island. The lichens, ferns, and other plants that grew a million years ago are similar to the ones growing today on a fresh lava field.
The spores of the fern are about the size of a grain of sand. Botanists think they were carried in the wind from Southeast Asia thousands of miles away. Maybe they were high up in the jet stream 30 or 40,000 feet in the sky. The freshly cooled lava flows provided rich nutrients for the new fern plants, and they spread quickly. There are 144 species of fern, native to Hawaii. The ohia tree has seeds that are light enough to travel by air and probably came from a distant island like Tahiti or somewhere in Southeast Asia. The ancestor of Hawaii's famous silver sword plant is a small flower in the sunflower family called the tarweed. Botanists think dried tarweed plants near the shore blew into the surf in prehistoric California and floated all the way to the newly forming Hawaiian Islands. That's about 2,500 miles. When a part of a plant or a whole plant floats in the water to form a plant somewhere else, it's called rafting. The tarweed that arrived from California is the ancestor of more than 30 species of silver swords, like this, that grow in Hawaii today. They look like little swords. Other plants, like the pohuehue, a type of morning glory, had seeds that could float, and those voyager seeds made the long journey by sea to the Hawaiian shores, quickly spreading new plants along the beach. Birds also brought plants to Hawaii. This sooty tern got tiny, sticky borhavia fruits stuck to her when she was eating. I guess her dad forgot to tell her to wipe her mouth after she eats. Other birds ate the fruits and the seeds from plants like this Haleakala sandalwood. Then they flew all the way to Hawaii from distant islands or continents, and you can probably guess the way they spread the seeds. Dead plants decomposed, becoming dirt for new plants, and before long, maybe less than 100 years, there were ferns, lichens, grasses, flowers, and trees everywhere, creating the natural beauty of Hawaii that we see today.